Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm Mark Callahan. I'm filling in for Bruce Broussard tonight on Oregon Voter Digest. Uh, tonight we have a couple guests with us. Uh, Angela Roman, who's a uh, campaign or a candidate for Congress in Oregon's 5th Congressional District, ultimately against uh, Kurt Schrader. Uh, we also have Richard Carpenter here, a uh, um, good, uh, or what's that? Producer. Producer, yeah, exactly. So we'll be talking about a couple things tonight. Uh, basically, we're going to be talking about the fact that uh, Angela and myself are the chief petitioners for a petition to reverse the legislature, what they did to us last session, uh, with uh, giving driver's licenses to illegal aliens, as well as we're going to be talking about uh, Angela's campaign for Congress. So let's get right into it here. Angela, you want to introduce yourself and tell us about yourself a little bit? Hi, thank you, Mark. Thank you. Uh, my name is Angela Roman, and I am running for Oregon's 5th Congressional District. Born and raised, and happy to be here. Richard, uh, you want to introduce yourself as well? well well, don't forget our show on the second Wednesday of each month, 7 o'clock. That's, that's when I have a show. But other than that, I try to come in and help Bruce. Well, thank you. Yeah, it was a real honor for Bruce to actually uh, give me a call here today. And uh, he's a little bit under the weather right now. His doctor told him to get a uh, little bit of bed rest. But uh, I, hopefully we can do a good job filling in for him today. So uh, let's get right into it here. We'll start out with the, uh, this uh, cheap petition that we're doing. Uh, to give people a little bit of background, uh, basically um, about uh, five years ago, uh, there was uh, the legislature passed uh, driver's licenses for illegal aliens. And as we remember, um, there was a referral uh, done by a, a group, Oregon for Immigration Reform, to refer it to the voters for a vote. Measure 88. Measure 88. And so um, we were instrumental on the No One 88 campaign, which actually passed Oregon by 66 percent out of 35 out of 36 counties except for here in Multnomah County of course but uh, basically 35 out of 36 counties in Oregon voted by over 66 percent against giving driver's licenses to illegal aliens so fast forward five years last year in the legislature um, one of the legislators uh, put forward a bill to basically reverse the will of the people basically kind of spit on the will of the people in the same process by basically reversing what we did five years ago, and now driver's licenses for illegals are now legal here in Oregon. So what we have to do is the legislature overturned us this last session. Now we have to overturn the legislature because obviously the legislature and those that voted for driver's licenses for illegal aliens are not working on behalf of the people. Will it go to a vote of the people then? Or? Exactly. Well, right now what we're at is, and then Angela and I are the chief petitioners on it. Right. So basically what we're doing is we gathered our first um, initial sponsorship signatures, which we started the petition um, on August 14th. We turned in close to 3,000 signatures uh, by August 30th, a matter of 16 days. This is how important this issue is to people here in Oregon. Mm -hmm. So right now we're at the point where we turned in our signatures. We got back 1,880 signatures that were valid and that the Secretary of State marked as valid. So right now we're in the draft ballot title process. And so, Angela, did you want to read our draft ballot title for us? Sure. So the draft ballot title is... This one? Uh, uh, start up there, yeah. So, demands repeal of law known as Equal Access to Roads Act. Um, the Attorney General is claiming that they don't understand what the effect of demand means. It's unclear to them. So, right now we're in the public comment phase where voters can go to the website. What's that website? Uh, StopLegalDrivers.com. Uh, yes. And you will see the link there where you can submit your public comments to reiterate and remind them that demand is pretty much clear in the bill, as well as Webster's Dictionary yeah. and so forth. We, the citizens, demand that this bill be overturned because they did it out of spite and they yeah, are doing it probably. against the voters. So basically, if people want to comment, um, I, I'll update the website also, but... Uh, Basically, they'll want to send an email to IRR 
listnotifier.sos at oregon.gov before um, October 8th. Yes, that's better. A little, little later, you better say that again. Yeah, no, um, need time to run. Yeah, stuff. we'll spell it out too. But okay. uh, basically, we just we just think this is the right thing to do. And um, being that Angela is a candidate for Congress, um, she's a woman of action, and uh, she's there's a lot of politicians out there that just talk and talk and talk, and they don't actually take action, you know. And they they say, oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and you know, and Angela is actually taking action, putting her name on the line here and uh, basically taking action to uh, fulfill the will of the voters that was supposed to be in place from five years ago. So, And, and we're, we're not supposed to uh, be, a, we're a sanctuary city, which it's, as I see it as a black mark against us. Yeah. Absolutely. And so that's, uh, that along with this, uh, having to do this again, that's unfortunate. Yeah. It really is. So... It really is. And, you know, to be honest, whether I was running for office or not, this is just something I would have done in the first place. Um, I fight for Oregon. I mm -hmm. will do anything for Oregon. I wish I could repeal everything that they had done. But unfortunately, you know, okay. I am a single mom with three kids. I'm, I am doing a lot, but I am proving that I am doing the work. I've helped collect over thousands of signatures for the recall Kate Brown. I'm very active. I'm a patriot before anything. And this just needs to be done. That's good. You're to be commended on all that. Yeah. That's good. That's great. Thank you. You got more things in here to brag about i think well in in terms of the a ballot initiative uh, to, go, to kind of go back to the whole uh sure. secretary or the not secretary state but attorney general uh doesn't understand what the word demand means i i think that um we need to be a little bit more assertive and aggressive this time because obviously if the legislature is going to overturn the will of the people as they did this last session then we the people have to be more assertive and aggressive about pushing back okay. and that, that's what we have to do we have to push back against the people that are not representing us and that's that's one of the great things about angela running for office she's going to be representing us she's a down-to-earth woman and she's a as i said a mom of three three sons mm -hmm. and uh she's she's been down on the ground and she's been um she's had to manage a budget in her own household and by doing this basically the legislature has said they're not representing us anymore and that's why we put the word demand in here. And I think the attorney general is basically, she does this to all conservative groups. You know, whether if it's a liberal group that gets out there and tries to put forward, she won't mess with their ballot title. You know, but if it's a conservative group, she'll find some way to insert some sort of punctuation or some sort of thing that discredits the conservative group's ballot title. I mean, she's done it in the past. She even tried to do it uh, with the sanctuary cities thing that you were talking, or sanctuary state thing you were talking about. Right. Um, this last election, mm -hmm. but and if the anti-gun bills, yeah, misleading exactly. the citizens, exactly. saying they're assault weapons when they're not, which we fought. Yeah, it's like yes <laughs> means no, no means yes. We live in a twilight zone, Oregon here, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. but uh, basically, we we I don't understand why she says the effect of demand is unclear. Well, well, we're the whole point of this initiative petition is to basically. Um, repeal the law the word demand in there was just very at the very end of what i wrote originally for the ballot uh description in, in the fact that we want we the people demand the repeal of this and she focused seemed to focus on the I word mean, demand well i mean she says it right here unclear whether demand actually repeals the act absolutely that's what it means we demand to repeal this act okay <laughs> I speak three languages, and I'm telling you, that's what it means. Miss Ellen Rosenblum, if you're listening. <laughs> I guess we're going to have to learn to speak legalese or something like that, or we're going to have to learn okay. to speak liberal or something. But the the point is, I, I think if the word demand was actually used for a liberal initiative petition, then it wouldn't be it, it wouldn't be an issue. But basically, they're, they're trying to muddy the waters here. And just to let everybody know, uh, this Equal Access to Roads Act was formerly known as HB 2015. Mm -hmm. So HB 2015 was being passed through the legislature. There was a little bit of delay because the Oregon 11 um, walked, out. Uh, walked out, which great for the Oregon 11. It stopped a lot of bad um, legislation. And I actually uh, support the Oregon 11 myself. But um, basically, this was formerly known as HB 2015. 
And uh, we're just, they unfortunately it passed, got signed into law by out of spite. H- out for of spite. HB 2020. Yeah, exactly. The HB 2020 was the, uh, the I guess the carbon tax mm-hmm. bill. The thing where they uh, there was such a protest by the people that all a bunch of log trucks basically circled oh, yeah. the Capitol. Yeah. yeah. yeah but this was basically yeah. uh, HB 2015, which was out of spite. They passed and signed into law. Kate Brown signed it into law on the 9th of August out of spite because she was kind of pissed off with the people protesting about HB 2020, so. Okay. We have toddlers yeah. in our current Democratic majority. Yeah. At the end of the day, like I said, I am a mom of children, and it's <laughs> very, very similar, uh-huh. their, their behaviors. It's kind of, I just want to put them in a timeout. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they all need to start acting like adults, and they all need to start uh, listening to the people you're representing. I even at even talk to my own representative, Mark Meek, um, about other bills also. And the guy hung up on me. I mean, he's not supposed to be hanging up on constituents. Oh. I live in Oregon City myself, and she lives in uh, Kaiser. And uh, fortunately, she's represented by Representative Bill Post. And Senator Kim Thatcher. And Senator Kim Thatcher, <laughs> yep. Okay. I'm but, lucky. Uh, I, and I'm represented by Alan Olson, which is, he's a good guy. And But Mark Meek, he bas- we were talking about, like for example, the uh, national popular vote thing. Oh, yeah. Um, and he basically said, well, I voted yes on that. Well, why? Because it basically disenfranchises conservatives. So basically, if I'm going to vote for Trump. I voted for Trump last time. And I'm going to vote for Trump this time because he's an excellent president, for what, by the way. Absolutely. Right. But right. Uh, it's, it, and if the Democrat clown that gets past the primary next May uh, gets it, then my vote is basically going to be thrown away because it's going to be based upon the, this national compact of national popular vote based on how other people in other states vote, and that's not that's not representation at all. Especially so. where those states are. Yeah, exactly. Texas, California, New York. Yeah. The closest to where there's all these people coming in from other countries. Well, yeah, Texas is pretty conservative, but I mean, you have all the liberal states that are passing this national popular vote thing, mm-hmm. and I don't want my vote thrown away. You know, oh, well, what right. would be really hilarious though is if Trump actually wins the popular vote, then Oregon would actually have to vote. For and Trump the with the popular vote, so basically deal. backfire on him, you know. Okay. So yeah, but uh, anyway, so uh, Angela, you want to talk about what we're what we're doing here in terms of the petition now, or just kind of in a waiting period, aren't we? Or? So I mean, as far as the petition goes, like we said, we we received we submitted two thousand nine hundred and sixty-four signatures within sixteen days, and then another five hundred and ninety came in that day. We have got people lined up. They are ready. I suggest you follow our Facebook page, Stop Illegal Drivers, and you can check out the website at stopillegaldrivers.com. I suggest, and we have a Twitter too. Yep, Uh, Stop Illegal Driv. Drivers was too long, so yeah. Twitter limits you on your characters. So, um, (laughs) but definitely the Facebook one is where we're most active, and we keep the voters informed of the process and. As soon as that green light hits and we're able to hit the ground running with those signatures, I personally myself will go live and make a video and post it to the page. We've got people lined up who are excited about this, who know that it's the right thing to do. They are already having events ready for signature gatherings, Mm -hmm. but they're just, they're waiting on standby. So this is not going to be a problem. I'm very confident we are going to get the signatures needed. Can we talk just a little bit about there's reasons why we we don't think they should come into the country and just give them you don't listen i've got a 17 year old son who's studying to get his license he has read that voter Uh, or not the voter manual excuse me politics so he's been studying the dmv guide you know he's doing everything the right way as an american born citizen and we don't this is america you nation, should not nation of laws, basically. Be, yeah. this, is, well, this is the that's land of the reason. laws. Yep. Yes, that's, that's the reason that. right there. We do not reward people who want to come here illegally. That's Have they already a crime. problem, so when they've been getting. Drunk driving is the number one cause of deaths to that's, Oregonian citizens here in after. Oregon. Yeah. I mean, we Absolutely. Have, I, there's a lady by the name of Maria Espinosa who runs the um, uh, Remembrance Project. And they have uh, these quilts that they um, carry mm-hmm. around the country, and they mm-hmm. display them. And on all these quilts, um, someone, a victim, is listed 
that's been killed by an illegal alien that's basically here illegally already breaking our laws. Mm -hmm. So if they're already in our country illegally, they're breaking our laws and they're doing fraud as well because obviously they can't survive without a social security number or getting a driver's license or getting a job illegally here and basically lying on federal paperwork to do so. So, I mean, in addition to breaking our law by crossing our border illegally, they're breaking other laws like fraud, for example. Uh, they're committing fraud. And then they're also basically kind of a, a sponge on our welfare system or social oh, services absolutely. system. So, I mean, it's it's like they shouldn't be here in the first place. Right. And I mean, that there are, there are ways to do it the right way, but I don't know whether it's just they don't want to do it the right way or they like to break the law or if they just are not motivated to follow the law. But There's a mix of exactly. it, but at the end of the day, we are a nation of laws. There's a right way to do it, and if you're not doing it the right way, we do not need to be rewarding that, period. Exactly. You know, that's, that's, okay. that's just making more entitlement, and I, as we've seen with the millennials, we've got enough of that. <laughs> uh, asking a technical question, once they get in the past here that they've gotten these driver's licenses, is that the next step towards getting Social Security, or do you know? Um, I, did, I, don't, I don't think getting a driver's license is, uh, equates to Social Security, but, I mean, basically, we have a uh, motor voter right now, you know, so obviously yeah. they're obviously registered to vote when they get a driver's license, and, I mean... That, well, the state of Oregon, okay. here's the thing, the state of Oregon is just like the state of New Jersey. New Jersey was actually one of the first people to be passing these IDs off to illegals, and here's the thing, they can vote, on the voter questionnaire, it asks, are you a U.S. citizen? They're supposed to check it the correct way, but if they don't, there is no process that double checks and verifies that. And if it does, there is no repercussions for it. It's pretty much the honor system. Just like our census, if it had bad, that, had that question. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It didn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's just a really big open door. And we all know, you know, Democrats love their loopholes. And the bill in itself, HB 2015, formerly known as, it, it, it's very intricate. It's a lot. There's a lot of loopholes, and I've I've been looking into it. I'm a former policy analyst for State Rep. Mike Nierman. Um, there's even a, a factor in there that says you must provide your Social Security card, but if you don't have one, you can basically bring in a note that says I don't have a Social Security mm -hmm. number. Wow. This is what they put in the bills, people. This is what I'm trying to look for. This is. What I'm trying to call out, and this is one of the reasons I fight, because this bill is nothing but a bunch of loopholes, and it's putting our citizens and my children, your children, at risk. Uh, a while back, my wife and I found the need to have those cards, and so we went down. Well, we went down, but we had we had everything you needed to get those cards proper. Uh, social security certificate. card is what you're talking about? Birth yeah. certificates, yeah. Yeah, everything. Yeah. We had everything you needed yep. to get those cards. And so I don't know how. Oh yeah, they practically, I mean, you got to show uh, a bill in your name under your residence, your oh. birth certificate, the blood of your firstborn. <laughs> I mean, it's intense going to the DMV and just, you know, another, for instance, I could be walking down the street and an officer can stop me and say, hey, can I see your ID? And if I don't have my identification, I can get a citation, but an illegal alien can come over here and get a driver's license and be rewarded. I mean, it, the hypocrisy is just insane and we need to sit down at the table. There is a, there's a way to make sure that those who are here seeking, you need to come here legally, yeah. legally, period. Um, we have enough homeless veterans. That could only happen. What, where's, where's the IDs for the homeless veterans and the homeless population that needs services, but they can't get them because they don't have an ID? Where's their stuff? You know what I mean? I think it's very telling with the, with the priorities of the Democratic Party, the liberals in this, for example. When they stand, when all six, oh, was it 16 of them or 20 of them or 25 in the clown car now, but... Uh, <laughs> Basically, when they stand up on that debate stage, I think it was like a couple months ago, and they all raised their hand saying they're going to give health insurance to illegal aliens, yet there are veterans here that are struggling getting health insurance. I mean, they're veter our veterans aren't being supported, but yet right. the Democrats and the liberals want to support illegal aliens, bring them into the country, open up the borders, tear down Trump's wall, <laughs> stuff like this, you know, but it's like, how is this not a threat to our own national security now? 110 yeah, exactly, percent it is exactly uh, so, and it's not just that it's the you know are we going to give the taliban driver's licenses next 
I mean, come on. Yeah. Can we protect America? Can we put America first? That's, that's right. We're a pretty open country. Mm -hmm. We're pretty benevolent. But I think a lot of people take advantage of that benevolence and use it for evil means. So. Absolutely. So. That's why they had to have the stop putting people on the planes without being thoroughly inspected. That's... Yeah, I mean, I, I went to Niagara Falls this last weekend, and I had to take off my shoes still. You know, oh, I mean, right. <laughs> I've been doing that for the past 18 years. So, I mean, um, I don't know. It's it's just, I don't know, what's your take on it, Angela? I mean, well, we have to do this. Still have to do this. Still have to take off your shoes. Still have to go through the line yeah you know i i don't i don't mind taking off my shoes i'm just a country girl so that doesn't really bother me i, I would actually prefer to run through the airport without shoes on however um you know we're constantly we're having to become more and more vigilant and watching our own six in a country that's supposed to be free because mm -hmm. of these democratic policies at the end of the day and i i, I do not want to leave that for my children and I will be darned if I'm going to leave my children to have to stand up and fight and fight for what's right. I'm here to do that for him. Okay. That boy right there, my you other two, and everybody start. else's children. So basically, if you guys want to write this down, uh, the email address to send your comments to is irrlistnotifier.sos at oregon.gov. I'll, I'll say that again. I-R-R-L-I-S-T-N-O-T-I-F-I-E-R right. dot S-O-S Sorry about that brain fart. Um, dot S-O-S at oregon.gov. So, I call it an AOC moment. Yeah, AOC movement. Yeah. <laughs> Which she is going to be back there and she'll be in AOC's face once she gets elected to Congress. So, vote for Angela. <laughs> I could do it in Spanish, too. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but um, did you guys want to take a break here then? Or um, yeah. then we'll we'll do the next segment after our short break here? Or? That'll work. Okay. We'll be back after this? We'll be back after these messages. <laughs> Good sign. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels, on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. All right, well, welcome back uh, to Oregon Voters Digest. I'm, my name is Mark Callahan, filling in as a guest host for uh, Mr. Bruce's heart. He, Bruce is under the weather a little bit today, and uh, his doctor told him to get some rest. But uh, it's, I, it's, it's a great honor to fill in for him uh, today. And uh, we're here with Angela Roman, who's a candidate for Congress in Oregon's 5th Congressional District, as well as our uh, cohort here, Richard Carpenter. So. Or Cunning, oh. is it Carpenter or? Carpenter. Carpenter, that's right, yeah, okay. So, and uh, we'll, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so in this segment, we'll um, go ahead and let Angela do most of the talking here in terms of her campaign. Uh, I'm, I, full disclosure, I am her campaign manager. I ran for Congress myself uh, in Oregon's 5th Congressional District last year against Kurt Schrader. Um, and I got about 42% of the vote, but Angela is actually definitely going to increase that percentage, if not actually beat Kurt Schrader. Uh, this year. So, Angela, can you tell us how you're going to do that and uh, yeah. where where you differ with Kurt Schrader on the issues? So, first of all, again, thanks for having me here to talk about my campaign. Um, the reason I am going to beat Kurt Schrader is, like my campaign manager said, he got 42% of the vote. Um, I'm definitely making up that 8%. I'm um, trilingual. Um, my children are half Hispanic. I'm reaching the Hispanic, the Latinos for Trump. Um, I am a walk away, so I do relate to many people here in Oregon on many different levels. And one of my things since I became a patriot and woke up to the, the democratic policies and what they're really inflicting on society is, um, you know, I love to educate. I love to go back to my roots. I love to go back to the people that are struggling. And I feel like it would be a terrible waste for me not to. Um, I feel it's my duty. I feel God has placed me here. Um, I've, I've struggled and I've succeeded and I've struggled some more in Oregon. And I, I truly feel God put me on this path because I am a woman of the people. Okay. That's I've got sounds okay to me. That's I've got sure. I mean just to just to back that up a little. I've got Democrats that are switching to Republican just to vote for me. Um I've got people that have never voted that are now registering to vote for the first time to vote for me. Um I've got people that just gave up on politics in general because they think that their voice doesn't matter anymore and they are re-registering to vote to vote for me. I've got people that I've got quite a few Democrats on the fact alone that they didn't understand really what got passed in 2017 okay. about the abortion issue, um, being able to have an abortion all the way till mm -hmm. you're practically given birth, all the way up till the date of birth for any reason. It doesn't have to be medical or, or whatever. And I sit down and I have those conversations with people and I, I explain to them that that's actually what passed. And, you know, I use this a lot and many people have heard it. Some have not on this show. Um, I'm a single mom of three boys. I could be eight pregnants with the eight months pregnant with a baby girl right now and ultimately walk into a clinic because I get cold feet because I don't know how to handle a girl or something and just have that baby murdered. I don't even call it abortion. That's, that's murder. And even those out there who are listening and who I've had discussions with who are pro-choice, they are like, whoa, wait a minute, that's, li that's way too extreme. That's not what we're asking for. So it's all about education. It's about having the, the gumph and the strength to stand on your convictions. Um, I personally have the character in me that I stand on my convictions. 
but like I said, I educate and I sit down at the table, as long as you're not trying to inflict violence on me like Antifa, then we can, we can do that. We can have a discussion. You can scream at me at the end of the day, when you're done screaming at me for an hour, we're going to find the solution. We're going to figure it out and we're going to move forward. Enough is enough. Like I said, you know, I'm a multitasker. It shouldn't take 10 years to figure out a solution to a problem. Okay. Period. So we talked about this a little bit in the first segment, uh, but Angela, what's your stance on immigration uh, in this country? On immigration, we, we are a land of laws. You got to come here legally. Um, but I, I hear the struggles, like I said, you know. Um, I speak Spanish. I know the Hispanic community. And I understand, you know, a lot of them are really, really good people and it shouldn't take 10 years. There's a lot of people that are good and they're going around it and coming here illegally because it costs too much and it takes too long. So I definitely feel that we could sit down. You still, I'm still going to keep my stance. You got to come here legally, but I'm willing to work on reforming the current policies that were put in place by Obama and such, you know, that, no. that Trump gets blamed for. <laughs> is, there, you know? is there any kind of solution you could suggest? Like, you know, I've heard that there's a, uh, a lot of people on the asylum waiting list. Yeah. And so is there any kind of solutions that you can suggest to, uh, to uh, kind of alle alleviate that, I guess, thousands upon thousands of waiting Absolutely. lists? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> we, we, have, we have states. Why don't we send a constitutional judge, one at the very least, I would pray for two, but at least one constitutional judge from every state in the nation, and they have to be constitutional. That means look into their history and how they vote, or not vote, but how they, you know, decree their cases. Are they doing it based off the Constitution, or are they far left extremists on either side? You know, we want an even kill someone that just upholds the oath and send them down there. Give them an incentive. It would cost so much less to say, hey, you know what? We're going to give you five grand or we're going to pay your rent for the next few months. Can you go down to the border and help these asylum judges versus let's keep the border wide open and have a free for all or release them 20 days after because they can't get in to see a judge because they are so backlogged, you know, which is putting us at risk. You don't know who you're letting out. And I'm telling you that if we think the Democrats deceive us, those coming here. There's a lot of deceivers, and we need yeah. real people down there. We need constitutionalist judges. We need to get it sorted out. We need to help speed up the process and get the ones in here who truly want to become productive members of society and or are actually running from, you know, having their heads chopped off by the cartels or whatever. But you got to prove it, and you got to do it constitutionally. you got to do it legally. By the way, do you, do you go to the sessions down there because that's where you live? Are you able to go to whenever they have sessions oh yeah yeah I, I worked for the 2017 long legislative session that was right after kate brown came out with her resist trump movement so you can imagine how chaotic that was but um i've been down there since then you know I, i've gone down to committee hearings to testify uh -huh. against anti-gun bills and been shut down and not given the opportunity as a congressional candidate so what i do is I stepped out onto those front steps of the Capitol and I went live for the people to see because I won't be silenced and they have a right and I had a right to give my statement and that's what I did. And we, we hear so much nowadays about how uh, Facebook, for example, is silencing conservatives and uh, why don't you, can, have you had personal experience about that? Absolutely. So I have my, my main Facebook account of 10 plus years was mass reported as being a fake, fake account. And the way Facebook works is, you know, enough people do that, you get it shut down and then there's no one to contact. That's it. You're shut down. I've uploaded my government ID. I've written an email. Hi, you know, I'm a congressional candidate. And by blocking me, I have no access to my Facebook campaign page or anything like that. So it's, it's definitely... You know, their algorithms can catch something that they claim violates community standards, but... They, they have no problem when it comes to the liberals or the stuff that I've seen come through. I've personally reported numerous Rose City Antifa, Eugene Antifa, oh. some of the photos that they have going, I mean, with very, very vulgar things. Um, sh the showing of Donald Trump having his neck slit, you know, stuff like that. And it comes back saying... We're sorry. We, we looked this over and seen that it does not violate any community standards. 
Whereas I post a meme of Marilyn Monroe with her famous saying, you know, if you can't handle me at this, you can't handle me at 100 or something like that. And it comes back as I'm in jail. I'm in jail for a week (laughs) on Facebook for something. It was deemed hate speech and against community standards. It's very double sided. Um, His days are numbered. We Mm -hmm. have been calling and contacting the Senate Investigations Committee that brought him and Facebook in front of the panel the first time. And when and if they do bring them back, they actually want me to come out and testify against them for interfering with my campaign. Okay. So I fight on many levels all day long. I, I don't I don't like tyranny. I don't I don't like the silence of people's speech. I don't like people. Um, holding others accountable for unconstitutional laws, whether it be unconstitutional gun laws and or just anything with, with the way the state loves to take our children. There's so much tyranny going on, and I, I just I don't stand for it. I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. I am here to protect your freedoms, and that's what I'm going to do. Um, have you been involved with, uh, did you want to ask a question? No, Richard? go ahead. Okay. Um, what's been your involvement with veterans here in Oregon? Are you, um, do you have any family members that were veterans or yeah. do you do like any activities with veterans and stuff like that? Or? Absolutely. My grandfather, may he rest in peace. He served, um, the Oregon national guard 36 years. And, uh, it's part of my wake up story. My little brother invited me to a convoy to remember nine 11 few years back um, the people that originally did it dropped the ball and just recently I held my third annual convoy to remember 9-11 after working in the legislature and seeing how they pushed our veterans aside I started my own group um, on Facebook Patriot E-T-T-E at the end (laughs) for Oregon veterans Um, I've put together and hosted and organized with a few really good, strong other patriots in this community. Shout out to Carol Williams. Love her. <laughs> um, and we organized and fed over 250 military police unit and their family members of the Oregon National Guard. And it was their first year that they were able to sit down with their families and not have to be in the kitchen and working. And... I mean, we even, I approached Denny's one day. I was driving down the street and I thought, oh, maybe they'll want to donate a pie. So I pull in and next thing I know, the night of the event, their whole day crew showed up in black and whites to help serve the dinner. Mm-hmm. It was amazing. So these are things that, you know, drive me, that I do. I donate to, I'm very strong for the, you know, people escaping domestic violence. Um, I try to get involved in just about everything I can to right what's wrong. That's a good attitude, that's for sure. Someone's got to do it. Yeah. That's, that's right. <laughs> Maybe so, the liberals aren't. Do you have a... You know, I've invited them. We actually, uh, we, we did the thing where we were going to feed the homeless. I don't know, did you come to that one downtown with the Northwest Alliance? Uh, I think I heard about it. But I think it so was... Antifa actually created a uh, counter event. Oh. They didn't believe that we were there to feed the homeless because they thought that we were there to promote our white nationalist hate speech upon the homeless and I'm like where where's the Nazis where are they where I'm Italian my kids are half Mexican that that doesn't hold water to me anymore I'm tired of it white supremacy I don't understand where that came from (laughs) my children are biracial I love multi-ethnicities I I mean I learned to speak two other languages I didn't go to school for it I'm Mm self-taught so uh, what's your what's your take on this? Whole, we've been hearing a lot in the news regarding this whole impeachment thing uh, going on. Do you have an opinion on that, Angela? I or? do. Yeah. I do. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. But just like with the tyrannical government we have here and the crazy stuff they do, it's a, they're actually ensuring our president's second term. Okay. Hands down. Hands down. And, you know, Kurt Schrader, for instance, I listened in on his town hall. And he was asked the same question, you know, he was asked, how do you feel? Are you going to take a stance on where you are with the impeachment? And he specifically said that he didn't want to take a stance either way. Um, He obviously doesn't like the president. He made that clear. But he also said that if he signed on to an impeachment, that he would be sealing the deal. And then come last week, just days after his phone town hall, 
there he is signing up for the impeachment. So it's like I, putting I, your finger in the wind, you know. It's yeah. like, oh. uh, do I do I feel this way today or do I feel this way today? Yeah, yeah. And we need a we need a um, a representative, not a not as a politician. But and then Angela is famous on the trail for saying she's not a politician. I'm not. She's mom and uh, she's very down to earth. Calls it as she sees it. Uh, but uh, yeah, we don't need any politicians anymore. No. We need people that actually represent people. And I know for uh, as a constituent of Kurt Schrader right now, he's not representing me. And I ran against him last year. So. Absolutely not. Yeah. I even called in to ask a question because in his town hall, he stated that we need a more secure border. And I thought nice okay what does that mean i was excited you know maybe he's finally getting a little common sense so i called in and they took my name i was one of the first callers they said you know we're gonna cut in and we're gonna bring you on nope but they did take about three other constituents calls from kaiser i never got a chance all the calls were directed you know set up to make him look great by his own constituents he didn't Fluff want issues, any other yeah questions from anybody who doesn't agree with him basically and i think that's real cowardly and it's very politician like and it's 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 enough our our citizens deserve better whether i agree with someone or not like i said i'm an open i'm an open door policy and i know many have heard that before but i've actually been posting my number publicly online and i've had i've got people reaching out to me all the time now on my phone call me up let's talk yeah so so your, your question about impeachment, all I know is today's Sunday. It's going out. This program is live now. Yep. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow morning, Rush Limbaugh will tell exactly what the deal is. Yep. That's exactly what I'm... It's the only, I don't need anything else. Yeah. Don't well, there's, there's more than one step in an impeachment process, and they're <clears throat> opening the door uh, right, for Trump right. to call anybody in. You know, call in Hillary. Call in Obama. Let's, let's get this ball on the roll, you know? I mean, the Democrats are so wound up, the far left Democrats are so wound up in their own hatred and their tantrum that their candidate did not make it in. That's right. That they are still continuing, like I said, I'm the mom, you know, that they, they need a timeout. They it's enough. They they need to go. Uh, speaking of timeouts, term limits. We definitely need those. Definitely need some term limits. What's your take on term limits? Uh we definitely need three in the house, two in the Senate. And that's good enough. I don't want to be there more than six years, America. I, I'm stepping up right now. I want to lead the path. I want to be the blaze runner to show y'all that it doesn't matter your past. It doesn't matter anything. You can, you can do whatever you need to do. If you want to be a voice for the people, then I encourage you to step up. Don't listen to the naysayers, whether they're on the same aisle or not, because it's going to come from everywhere. You got to be strong. You got to have thick skin for this. And I'm willing to put my life and my chopping, my head on the chopping block to prove that, you know, that this is the greatest country in the world. And people like Kaepernick and them that complain and say that they're oppressed, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I'm a success story myself. And I want to inspire others to get involved with their government. It's supposed to be we the people for the people, not we the people for the politicians. And that's how it's been going. Okay. Well, you got a lot of subjects here, and <laughs> what, what you are for. So that's that's. Uh, well, can you, can you never tell people? Cover all these. Can you tell people? Sorry to interrupt your Richard. Oh, um, tell people your website and how to get a hold of you here. So my website is Angela Roman for Congress dot com. Um, you can follow me on Facebook at Angela Roman for Congress dot com. I am also on Twitter at Roman for Oregon. And um, like I said, I'm not scared of anybody or anything. I've been from the front lines up here in Portland against Antifa to, uh, I'm not even going to say against Antifa because they've been against me. Um, I fight. I fight. I, I'm not willing, I'm not scared to get down and dirty. I've stood up here in Portland to protect everybody's right to peacefully assemble without the threat of, threat of violence. And I... I take that with me, and I hope to take it to Capitol Hill and get some get your, some reins on this. Your email, Angela <laughs> at Angela Roman for Congress dot com. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much that. So I think that's what we need in, in Congress nowadays, and that's one thing I really admire about Angela is the fact that she is a fighter. I mean, we have so many kind of weak need, wishy washy politicians, and now that'll in Washington right now, they will, they will say anything to basically 
uh, kind of smooth over people, make them think that people, they're working for the people, but yet they go back to Washington 3,000 miles away and they get infected by the swamp again. Right. And then they don't work for the people. They forget who they're representing. And I think that's what happens when you're there in Congress for more, I don't know, more than 10, 20 years. You know, you forget who you're working for. And that's one thing that Angela uh, is right now. She knows who she's working for. Um, she's planning on going back there and have a, what they refer to as an open door policy. Angela, can you tell us about that? Yeah, absolutely. I am working for the people. You know, like I said earlier in the show, I've been successful. I've been unsuccessful. I know what it means to eat top ramen and not know what's going to happen the next day. And, you know, um, I'm very humble. I can't be bought. I won't be bought. I stand strong on my stances and I will not go and forget about Oregon. I'm Oregonian through and through. Mm -hmm. I was born here. I'm raising my children here. I plan to retire here. I plan to die and be buried here. This is my home and I'm willing to stay here and fight for it. And I just, I, I, the only way I can prove it to you is if you vote me through. And I okay. think my record speaks for itself. When I say I'm going to do something, I do it. Okay. Can you tell us how you feel about uh, agriculture and uh, the whole timber unity movement? So, I mean, I get asked that all the time and I big shout out to them. You know, I've seen many trying to attach themselves to them. Um, they've got it. They've got this under wraps. They are incredible. They are the biggest grass movement thing I've ever seen. And granted, I haven't been in this that long, but I knew it from day one. That's why I was there the day that they had their huge rally. Um, when they were circling the Capitol, is that what you're talking oh, about? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I actually got stuck yeah. in the traffic on State Street, and I got out of my car, and I started climbing up on the things. I'm like, my name's Angela. I'm not a politician, but take my card. You're <laughs> awesome. You know, I'm just, I'm that person. I and mean, Mark's seen me out at the county fairs and stuff. I'll just walk up to anybody. Hi, yeah, how just you doing? randomly, yeah. Boom, it's just there amazing. You go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, but with the timber, with the timber thing, you know, this current majority is is very angry and spiteful and they want it their way they want everybody to live in this perfect bubble with electric cars and everything's peachy and there's no ozone problem and it is they're attacking our heart when they're going after the timber industry they are attacking the very founding of this state you know people fighters came and covered wagons you know fighters for farming for everything this is how they survive and there's multi-generational families and businesses here and you know so, sadly a couple of them are already up and leaving you know businesses are closing down left and right i just attended it doesn't have to do with timber but you know an iconic restaurant in our town closed down rock and rogers and it's a 50 style diner um, it's all these policies that are being passed and now they're trying to do it to the timber industry and that's just going to kill That's going to kill us money wise, economic wise. We're, we're going to turn into Venezuela. We've got to put a stop to this, you know, so I'm definitely for fighting with that. I know some of them are out there uh, in the middle of recalling Tiffany Mitchell up and down the coast. They're working hard on that. So, I mean, America is watching and Oregon is awake. We are awake, we are fed up, and we are standing, and we're proving that on every aspect from the, me the medical mothers to the timber unity to the no driver's licenses for illegals. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, to the constant attacks on our Second Amendment, and that's something I will never falter on, ever, ever. I don't care if somebody approached me with $20 million and wanted me to pass anything anti-Second Amendment. I'm going to tell them where they can put that. Twenty million dollars, <laughs> right? Because it's okay. it's it's priceless when it comes to my children being able to protect their life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. So you're really strong on the Second Amendment, absolutely. then? Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Absolutely. That's awesome. So, uh, Richard, did you have any questions you want to ask right no. now? No, we cover everything you wanted to cover right now. Um, it's, um, let's well, take a look at your talk, brochure talk here. About education. You're in favor uh -huh. of that. So. Uh, I'm in favor of. The federal government pulling out of it as much as possible. I'm in favor of getting it, uh, getting rid of the core, core common, common core, common yeah. core yeah. education system. I'm in favor of teaching our children the basics. You know, a couple summers ago, I had to sit down and teach my children cursive. 
Me. Yeah, they don't teach cursive in school anymore, do they? No. I mean, yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, you know, they don't want to teach cursive, but they're willing to sit a group of kindergartners down and 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 teach them about transgenderism and oh, yeah. and they don't even teach the constitution stuff. anymore do they I mean, no no yeah. no um you know september 17th was constitution day and there's actual a federal mandate that the schools any schools receiving federal money are supposed to teach the constitution on constitution day and i asked my 14 year old who just entered high school i said so son did they teach you about the constitution today he said no they were teaching them about immigration that day they are the the schools have been taken over with the far left ideologies. They are um, trampling on our parental rights by doing so. They are trampling on the rights of my children and your children's innocence, and their rights as well. Wasn't there some sort of legislature the other day that says that the children belong to the state or something like that? I, I mean, that's that's like communism right there. That's like, oh wow, you know, really? I wouldn't have believed children that. belong to their parents, and not the state. You know, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was uh, Tiffany Mitchell. Yeah, exactly. I believe, the one that's that under recall that. the right one now. That's yeah, beginning to get recalled. Yeah. And I suppose that can't happen fast enough. Yeah, I exactly. Mean, I mean, the state is not my baby daddy. Mm -hmm. Okay, the federal <laughs> government is not my baby daddy. <laughs> yeah. okay. You know, those are my children, and we just as your children are your children. And if you want to teach them about all these different things, then that's something that you need to do and is your right to do in your own home. But you do not have the right to push it on mine or anybody else's children. And, and I'm very strong against that and stand for it. So much to the fact that I actually helped stand and hold signs to get some pretty good conservatives elected on our Salem-Kaiser school board recently. So Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Okay, so you're going to summarize that just for anybody turning so, in. So uh, if you guys are tuning in late, uh, we're talking with Angela Roman. Uh, she's a candidate for Congress as well as a chief petitioner. Uh, during our first half hour, we were talking about how uh, we are overturning the legislature. The legislature is not working for us. And so about five years ago, we, pat we voted no on driver's licenses for illegal aliens. And the legislature this last year overturned that. So now we have to overturn the legislature. And Angela and I are the uh, chief petitioners on the ballot measure, or not ballot measure, but an initiative petition to overturn uh, driver licenses for illegals to basically set set it back the way the people voted back in 2014. So we talked about that during our first half hour segment. Uh, second half hour segment, we were talking about how Angela is going to help this country go back there and fight for the people because she is she is one of us. So right. And uh, Angela, if you want to give your website information again, or. So again, you can follow my campaign at AngelaRomanForCongress.com. Um, a little mnemonic device I tell people sometimes is I'm Roman for Congress. <laughs> so AngelaRomanForCongress.com. You can follow me on Facebook at AngelaRomanForCongress. Um, we're on Twitter at Roman for Oregon. Um, we have an Instagram. Uh, we have an Instagram, and then we all you can also uh, donate if you choose to yes. uh, on the on the website, which. Uh, we're always looking for help on that. But you can also check out the way Angela stands on the issues on her website as well. So, And, and we even have a store, too, don't we? I we mean, do. We do. Yeah. You can get some Angela Roman for oh. Congress gear if you want to get your swag. We've got some Trump 2020 oh. hats. Um, and you can even endorse her as well. There's an endorsement oh, page as well. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Endorsements yeah. are always welcome. Um, you know, I, I've said it before and, you know, those who don't know me, but those who do have heard me say it before. I'm very humble. I know, um, I need to be asking for money and I don't do it as often, but that's, that's not. Oh, we just direct people to the website. basically. Yeah, yeah, so. I do. I, I will state today that we definitely, we could use some donations. You know, my opponent is raising millions of dollars. Um, I encourage everybody to follow my FEC my FEC report because I am honest. We've been running an honest campaign. Um, of oh. course, we don't see that with other candidates and politicians. Um, I, I spend the money frugally. I don't spend $285 at Safeway for supplies. You know, we go to <laughs> Office Max. We're conservative. We will not abuse your money. And it is all specifically to get my name out there, get my message out there so that I can truly be your voice 
and I promise this will be one of the best investments you've made if you're willing to bring our government back to we the people for the people. So Angela Roman for Congress.com. As I said, you can check out how she stands on the issues and feel free to, if you'd like to donate, you can. And But uh, yeah, definitely check out how she stands on the issues. So, um, Richard, yeah. did you have any other well, questions nothing, or anything? Or? I guess it's good we didn't get into health care because we would have never stopped. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you well, know, universal health care for everyone is just more socialistic hogwash, you know? Uh, yeah. You know, some of the, even even the America First jobs, I, you know, the stuff kind of goes on and on. We could talk at great length about it. Well, and it, and it goes even into the far left extremists with the whole, you know, timber stuff. You know, it, at, at the end of the day, at the beginning of the day, how we live and how we behave begins with us. You know, don't right. throw your plastic jugs away. There's <laughs> recycling for it. We're one of the best states for recycling. Not only do we have reduce, reuse, regrow or recycle we have regrow like we we know how to recycle we can That's we right. Oregon is one of the most beautiful states in the nation I know people that personally fly over here once a year from the east coast just because of how beautiful it is and you know lately they're they're reconsidering not flying out here anymore because it, it's it's deteriorating quickly and they they've seen it my, and my lawn is green yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I can tell you that i mean i i used one of those little paper straws they're trying to push now i guess and uh when i went on a vacation here to niagara falls this last week but it Just actually it comes off yeah it actually fell apart by the end of my dinner and i had to get another one just to drink my drink unless i wanted to pick up the cup but the paper straws, I mean, I, I tell you, I, every time I go to a fast food restaurant, they give me this plastic straws. I save those up. I think I'm going to take those down to California and sell them on the black market or something. Well, you know, you know so. and uh, to bring up another point, I was yeah. at Willamette the other, or yeah. at Walmart. Yeah. Come over here, Papa. My my son would like to be introduced. And we want to thank the crew for doing, making this all possible. <laughs> yeah. The other day we went to Walmart and uh, there was <laughs> this is Michelangelo. He's an artist. Oh, which camera? You look at this. All right, one right there. Right. Yep. Hello. <laughs> it, feel, it feels kind of weird because I'm trying not to get distracted by the screen right there, but <laughs> there's a camera right there, and I'm getting distracted by. Do you want to say anything before you go back over there? Make Minecraft great again. <laughs> and who should, vote who red. People, yeah. <laughs> who should people vote for you? Vote for your mom. Vote for me. Vote for you, eh? <laughs> oh, looks like I've got competition yep. now. <laughs> okay. We, All right, look. We, we are just about there. We have seconds left. But thank you, guys, for coming. Earth. Oh, thank you, Richard. Thank yeah. you. Thanks yep. for Perfect. having me. I'd yeah. love to come back the further on down the trail we get. I know. Keep I you up to date we'll definitely on keep you up to date on the uh, petitioner running here, too. So. Oh, yeah. All right. Yep. Okay, I think.